Hi friends, welcome to Pre-Cal today. First, we're gonna start with a warm up, and this is just a review of what we've already learned about coterminal angles. So how about pause your video right now and work these two problems regarding finding a positive coterminal angle and finding a negative coterminal angle, and then come back and check your work. All right. Now that you have done it, let's give this a quick check. Remember, coterminal angles are angles that terminate at the same location on the coordinate plane. So to start both of these, I'm just going to draw um, a quick diagram of the rotation. So 48 degrees is going to be, you know, somewhere about right there. It's in the first quadrant. There's 48 degrees. So what's it going to be coterminal with? Well, if we were to rotate all the way around, we just need to add 360 to that. So when it comes to coterminal, we're always going to be adding 360 or subtracting 360. So 48 plus 360 is going to be 4, whoops, supposed to be a 4, 408, 408 degrees. Now, what if we give it in terms of radians? Well, let's think about where 2 pi over 5 would be. Now, what do we know? We know that at the top is pi over 2. So, is 2 fifths bigger than 1 half? Um, no. So, we know that this also is in the first quadrant. If it's 2 over 5, remember, one more, once more, that's a little bit smaller than 1 half. So, 2 pi over 5 is probably close to right there. Um, FYI, if we wanted to change it to degrees, which you don't have to, but just a reminder, that would be 2 pi over 5 times 180 over pi, cancel the pi's, cancel the 5, it would be 72 degrees. So 2 pi over 5 is about right there. And if we want to know the coterminal angle in terms of radians, because remember, if we start a problem in radians, we need to finish a problem in radians. And if we're adding 360 in terms of radians, that is just going to be 2 pi. So 2 pi with 5 as a denominator will be 10 pi over 5. So what's going to be coterminal here? 12 pi over 5 radians. So those are both positive coterminal angles. Hope you got those right. Let's take a look at the negative ones down below. First of all, 75 going to be about right there. There's 75 degrees. And if we want a negative, instead of adding 360, we will subtract 360. So 75 minus 360 is going to be 260 minus 15 more. So hopefully I'm getting this right. Um, went back and checked my work since I am not a great subtractor and it's negative 285. Okay, so here we go. 7 pi over 3 radians. Honestly, I think it's easier to deal with in terms of radians because it's just easy fractions. I'm not even going to draw it this time. Oh, maybe I should. If we're at 7 pi over 3, think about that. 3 goes into 7 more than 2 times. So if we go all the way around once, that's 2 pi. This is 2 pi and a third. So we got to go one more. So, woo, that is a rotation all the way around plus pi over 3, which understanding that is going to come in handy in the second part of this lesson. So what are we going to need to do here? If we first subtract by 6 pi over 3, and remember it's 6 pi over 3 because that's equivalent to 2 pi, that is going to give us pi over 3. Is that a negative answer? No, we got to go again. So pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. So a negative coterminal angle is going to be negative 5 pi over 3 radians. So um, remember, sometimes subtracting the 2 pi is not enough. Maybe we got to do it a couple of times. Okay, moving on. Here's number 3 in the warm up. How about read it, draw it, pause the video, and find the sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, hopefully you did that. And let's give it a shot now. 
if we draw this, and let's read it again, find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the rotation that terminates at negative 410. So negative 410 is going to be somewhere right here in quadrant 3. And that's important based on what we've already learned about the coordinate plane and finding rotations and their trigonometric values. So remember, we've got this rotating ray. Remember, the rotating ray always starts in what we say is standard position. So here's actually our theta right here. Now, what we can see is that clearly theta is an obtuse angle. Now, we're going to be learning how to deal with thetas that are obtuse angles today and how we can refer back to a triangle. Um, but what are we going to do with this? Well, just like we've already learned, we are going to drop down that altitude always to the x-axis. And what we're finding here is what we're going to call theta prime. So if this is negative 4 and this is up 10, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to find the length of our rotating ray. Um, obviously, if this side is negative 4 and this side is 10, the hypotenuse here is not 1. Think about it. It is not 1. We are going to find it using Pythagorean theorem. So negative 4 squared plus 10 squared is going to equal our c squared. We want to call that c for our hypotenuse there. So that is going to be 16 plus 100 equals c squared. That's 116 equals c squared. Square root, square root. That is going to be 29 times 4 because 100 is divisible by 4, 16 is divisible by 4, so 116 must be divisible by 4. It is 4 times 29. So when we simplify that radical, we get 2 root 29 for our hypotenuse right there. All right, so to finish this problem, I am going to get to a clean sheet of paper here in my technologically advanced notes and we are going to finish it. All right, so here we are. We've got this triangle, and I think I'll just go ahead and transpose it to my paper here. Remember, what quadrant? Quadrant three. That's important. So, da 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 Negative four, ten, two, root, twenty-nine. This is going to give me a whole lot more room to work with. All right, so remember, this is actually our rotation. That's theta. And then we have this new angle that we're going to call theta prime, okay? So we're going to call that theta prime. We're going to talk a whole lot more about it pretty quickly. But what it does is it refers us back to a triangle here. So if I want to find the sine of theta, we're just going to refer to theta prime. So here we go. Sine, by definition, is opposite over hypotenuse. So that is going to be 10 over 2 root 29. And, of course, the 2 will cancel with the 10 five times. And we will also rationalize our denominator. So we end up with 5 root 29 over 29. That is the sine of theta. Notice that sine in quadrant, that's not quadrant 3, Hendry, that's quadrant 2, my bad, in quadrant 2 is going to be positive. Okay, let's go to the cosine. The cosine of theta. Cosine, by definition, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, adjacent over hypotenuse. And once again, we're going to cancel the 2 with the negative 4 negative two times, and we will also rationalize that denominator. So that will be negative two root 29 over 29. And it's not really an attractive fraction, but you just roll with it because it is simplified. Let's keep going. We're after the tangent. The tangent of theta, tangent by definition, is opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent, 10 
over negative 4, and that, of course, is just negative 5 halves. So, once again, we are in quadrant 2. Sorry, I said that wrong just a few minutes ago. And notice what's positive. The sine is positive, the cosine is negative, and the tangent is also negative. Um, that's because the only value that's positive here is the up, the 10. And of course, the length of the rotating ray is always positive. The adjacent side is negative. That's why the cosine and the tangent are going to be negative there. Now, those problems are right from your homework that we have completed or that you should have completed. And we're moving right on into a new um, concept today. And we're going to start with this question. What's the difference between a coterminal angle and a reference angle? So we just talked all about coterminal angles and how they terminate together. They terminate at the same spot on the coordinate plane. And we're moving on into reference angles. And we really just saw one in that last example. Now, here are three things that you have to know about reference angles. Write these down because I'm definitely going to ask you again. They are always positive. They are always acute. And they are always formed with the x-axis. Always positive, always acute, always formed with the x-axis. And their name is kind of telling us what they're all about. A reference angle is going to refer us to a triangle because we don't have trigonometric ratios unless we have a right triangle. Because, like we just said, by definition, the sine is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if we take a look at, and let's just focus on this 150 degree rotation here. If we think about 150 degrees, does 150 degrees can I have a triangle that has one angle equal to 150? Um, is it, or better yet, is it possible for me to draw a triangle here? No, but what is possible is for me to drop an altitude over here and refer to a triangle. So I can have a triangle with 150 degrees is what I meant to say, but can I have a right triangle with a 150 degree angle? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a reference angle to refer to a right triangle. So if a reference angle is always positive, always acute, and always formed with the x-axis, we're forming one right here. And an easier way to think about how big a reference angle is, is ask the question, what is the quickest trip to the x-axis? Well, if we are here, the quickest trip to the x-axis is going to be 180 minus 150. It's going to be 30. So our reference angle here is 30 degrees. So if 150 is our theta, our theta prime is going to be 30. Quickest trip to the x-axis always. So if we have it in terms of a radian, once again, if we start in degrees, we finish in degrees. If we start in radians, we finish in radians. So if we have a rotation that's negative pi over 4, that's not positive. Therefore, it's not a reference angle. And a triangle doesn't have a negative angle in it. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to not go down to the x-axis, but we're going to go up to the x-axis perpendicular to the x-axis, essentially that's an altitude like you learned about in geometry, and say, all right, what is the distance to the x-axis in terms of a positive rotation, an acute rotation? Well, in this case, if it's down pi over 4 radians, that means that the reference angle is simply going to be positive pi over 4 radians. So reference angles refer us back to a right triangle. Once again, they are always positive, always acute, 
always formed with the x-axis. So let's take just a few minutes and look at a few more reference angles before you get started on your homework assignment. So we want to find reference angles for the following rotations. Let's start with 310. Obviously 310 degrees is not an angle in a triangle. Let's start by drawing it. Where would 310 be? Here's 90, here's 180, here's 270. 270 plus how much more? About 40 degrees more. So there's a 310 degree rotation. Remember, that is our theta. We're after our theta prime. Theta prime is going to be the reference angle. So what is the quickest trip to the x-axis? It is right there. So if this much was 40, it must mean that our reference angle is going to be 50. Our reference angle here, or theta prime, is 50 degrees. Once again, it's always positive, it's always acute, it's always formed with the x-axis. So when we drew that 310 degree rotation, how much more till we get back to the x-axis? 50 degrees. Let's do it with 5 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 is going to be, all right, so think fourths. That's 45 degrees. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths. So here's 5 pi over 4. There's that rotation. Obviously, 5 pi over 4 is bigger than 180. It does not fit in a right triangle. So we need to refer back to a right triangle. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to the x-axis with an altitude right here. So how far are we from the x-axis? When it's in terms of radians, it's pretty easy. We are pi over 4 units away from the x-axis. Therefore, our theta prime is pi over 4 radians because pi over 4 radians is the quickest trip to the x-axis. Let's do it once more with negative 175. So negative 175 is going to be about right there. And it's pretty easy to see. What is the quickest trip to the x-axis here? If we drop that altitude, in this case, raise it up to the x-axis, we know that if we went negative 175 in this degrees in that direction, how much more to get to the x-axis? It's only 5 degrees. Theta prime is 5 degrees. Last one, in terms of radians, negative 11 pi over 9. Negative 11 pi over 9. Let's think about that. So that's going to be 9 into 11 is one time with two ninths left over. So here is 9 ninths, negative 9 ninths. We need to go up two more ninths which somewhere along there. So if our theta is negative 11 pi over 9, think about how much more we had to go if all the way to 180, halfway around is 9 ninths, then we need to go, here's my altitude, there's my theta prime right there. My theta prime is the 2 pi over 9 radians for my reference angle. So one more time, reference angles refer us to a right triangle. They are always positive, always acute, always formed with the x-axis.